Welcome to Do It in Durham 2021. Now in its ninth year, Do It in Durham is an event series that takes place during Global Entrepreneurship Week. It is Durham region's own forum to celebrate, inspire, and support entrepreneurship. Stay tuned as we bring on our presenter. To Do It in Durham, which takes place during Global Entrepreneurship Week and is Durham region's own forum to celebrate, inspire, and support entrepreneurship. 2021 is our ninth year. Our theme this year, riding the waves. Just like in surfing, businesses need to be able to ride the waves, fight the sharks, and find the perfect wave. This event series is a collaboration of organizations and resources for businesses in Durham region, in partnership with business owners and entrepreneurs sharing their expertise. For this one, we've got the amazing, the queen of connection, the queen of networking, Marlene Marco, who's going to lead us on virtually networking. Marlene, over to you. Thank you, Patrice. And, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us tonight. Um, of course, I'm not sure I can see from some of you that I know, I know some of you are experienced networkers and uh, probably some that are fairly new to it too. So we'll cover lots of different, lots of, Lots of territory tonight. Um, and I love the theme for this year's Do It in Durham, Riding the Wave, because we know that there are waves even at the best of times, right? And of course the waves over the last, whatever it's been now, year and a half, um, have been unique waves. Um, but what one of the things that I think is really important to remember when you talk about networking and when you think about networking, whether it's virtual or in person, is no momentum. And if you can keep it going when you're at the top of the wave, keep the momentum going so that you don't have quite so much of a crash in between, um, you will find it easier to pick up and move on. So, you know, the whole, uh, the whole idea of waves in business is, is not new, but uh, I think it's something we have to pay attention to. I, I see that and I call it a mistake that people make sometimes is that, you know, they're so busy, they don't need to network. And that's wonderful today. Uh, <laughs> let's look at what's going to happen next month or six months from now or a year from now. So um, just being consistent. We're going so, to look at, first of all, three different things. We're going to look at um, the purpose of networking. We're also going to look at why it seems like some people are so successful at networking and um, others maybe not so much. That's kind of the nuts and bolts and the strategy of purposeful networking. And then also, of course, how has effective business networking changed? Because we all know that it, that it has in some ways and in other ways, not at all. So the purpose, why, why do we network? We all have heard the, the term that people do business with who they know, like, and trust. And that's a good foundation for networking. I always add to that, know, like, trust, and remember. Because you can get to know someone, you can like them, you can trust them, but if you haven't seen them around for a year, maybe even just six months, does that raise a question in your mind? Are they still as engaged in their business? What's happened to them over these last 18 months? Um, so just um, the, the remember part is, uh, is important. And that's partly why we attend events as well. So you can do all kinds of marketing um, and certainly online marketing is important, um, but now we've, we also need to have that personal touch and we can still get that through virtual. Why, else, why do you network? To find your next customer? Maybe, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> if you find your, first cust your next customer on your first visit to any organization, thank your lucky stars, because it's likely not going to happen quite that way again. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, um, but the experienced networkers in the group know that. Sometimes you do catch a person just at the timing is right. They need your service. They need your, your product. And that's perfect. But it's not always as straightforward as that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and patience. We would also attend events to understand not only who does what, but why they do it. And why is that important? Why is the why important? 
Imagine the value you can add in your business when you can refer a trusted source for the products or services they need. So for example, and I always remember this lady, it was years ago, she came to, uh, to Heart of Networking. Um, she's a realtor. And she said to me, you know, I never come here looking for my next listing. Fair enough. We don't use a realtor every day. But when we do use a realtor, we want to know that she is connected in the community. We want to maybe rely on her for some of the services. So her purpose for coming to networking was to create her own circle of contractors. And um, so, you know, uh, um, who are the moving companies that people recommend? Who are the cleaning services, the stager, the, um, the landscaper, the roofer, the, the renovator, all those things are attached to to uh, to homes and home buying. It's nice that people are still joining. I like that. <laughs> um, uh, they might even want to know just uh, childcare in the area. There's all kinds of services that that a realtor would uh, want to know, right, Susan? Um, and then there are also, no matter what your business is, there are people around you that that you your clients would be looking for. So finding that. Um, that referral circle is is really important because if, if you can simplify their life then you know that uh, they're going to remember you for sure you might also attend an event to uh, to build your own team and by that i mean the services that you need in your business so you know bookkeeper uh, cleaning whether it's office or home social media expert uh, photographer, virtual assistant, building relationships with these people before you are in a pinch for time will save you stress and money. And it may also give you a goal to work towards. I remember when I first um, was, I, I always did my own books. And then when I decided it was time, I passed that off to someone else. Um, I knew exactly who I wanted to pass it along to. And it was like a weight off my shoulders, but and it now was the right time. And it was somebody that had been coming to Heart of Networking for many years. So I obviously remembered her. So networking is where you find people, you get to know their niche, what their specialty is, and you don't get that backstory when you look at an ad somewhere. Now, I'm not saying don't place ads, you know, look at your budget carefully and, you know, work that through because it might be, you know, the ad is one more touch point for sure. So if you've met someone networking, you've built a relationship with them and then you see their sign on a bus or on a bench or on a, in the newspaper, it, it validates what you've come to learn. And it's that one more touch point for remembering them. So it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's just maybe not the first or the strongest in my humble opinion. So who else might you be looking for in a networking organization? We touched on sales. We talked about building referrals. We talked about surrounding yourself with an excellent team. How about educating yourself? How about going to an event with a goal to learn something new? Actually, a willingness to both learn and teach. It's how we all grow. And of course, support. There's nothing better than surrounding yourself with like-minded, positive, high energy people. And by the way, if you aren't feeling that at any of the organizations that you're attending, maybe it's time to uh, broaden your horizons a little and check out some other groups. So let's talk about strategy because that's what people always want to know. Well, that's all very nice. I can build relationships. How do I turn that into actual business? Well, that is where, where business starts, is with the relationships. And I always say, and I've already said tonight, be consistent, for sure. Be curious. And by that, I mean, learn what they do, why they do it, and why they might need your service or product. If they don't have a need for what you're selling, it doesn't matter how smooth you are or how... Um, uh, whether you use the right words or not, um, they just don't need what, you're, what you have at this point in time. So 
it's, 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 that's why the conversations are so important and building those relationships and learning to ask lots of questions. So asking questions um, that lead to information that, that let you know whether or not they are in need of what you have. And once you find out that they are, you always need to ask permission to share what you've, what you've got. So, and that's a mistake that I, I find, you know, in, I've been leading networking groups now for uh, 15 years and Heart of Networking will be 10 years old next year. So I've seen a lot of what works and sadly what doesn't work. Um, and we're all human and we all like to know that we're in control. So what I suggest to you is if you want to share an, an idea or, you know, uh, something about your business with someone, just simply ask them if they're open to hearing about it or ask them, have you ever thought of whatever it is you want to tell them? Uh, I'll give you an example of that that happened recently. Um, I was having a, a marketing conversation, which was a follow-up conversation to a networking meeting. And this lady said exactly that to me. She said, have you ever thought of, and then she went on to give just a brief explanation of the marketing idea that she had. And I said, well, actually, no, I had not thought of that. Tell me more. So that was a much better approach. How do you feel if somebody says to you, you, you need to do, or you need to use, or you need to, yikes doesn't that kind of just get your back up a little bit but if somebody says you know have you ever thought of or would you be open to think to, to this idea that's a great approach I lost my space here um the other thing to to always remember is to be kind and that should go without saying but being kind is not necessarily how you perceive it it's how they are perceiving it from their side of the conversation. And sometimes that's, there's a disconnect there. So just be aware of that. And being kind is simply being of service. That's it. Offering them something that they're open to receiving. No hidden agenda. So that's a little bit about, um, you know, the, the relationship building side. Um, the other uh, mechanics of networking groups is to take advantage of every opportunity that you have to highlight your business that might be speaking it might be sponsoring it might be volunteering it might be submitting an article for a newsletter um, but whatever you're offered and I know that's difficult I know that if you're not used to speaking it's like oh, I couldn't do it well you don't have to be the keynote but maybe there's a small part that you could play. Maybe there's a small contribution that you could make because, you know, I, I understand not everybody wants to be in front of the, in front of the room, but that's where people notice you the most. So keep that in mind. If you want to be seen and remembered um, for being a, a, you know, part of the, uh, part of the program, then by all means. And here's what I think may be the best tip that I have for you when it comes to strategy. Look for collaborative partners. How much further do you think your reach would be if there were two or three of you working on a project? If you were collaborating with two or three or four other people, um, the uh, entrepreneurs that each one have their own circle of contacts. And if you can share those contacts, the ripple effect is then two or three times the size. So of course it has to work both ways. It has to be a win-win situation. Um, we've all probably come across people who want to tap into your, uh, your network and that's okay, that works, but it has to work both ways. There has to be gain on both sides. So who could you collaborate with? This is where you need to be creative. A uh, couple of ideas, um, think outside your own reality. So don't just think about what you do and who your market is. Um, it's, it's really marketing 101 that, um, that says, who do you know that has the same target market as you, but serves them in a different way? 
and that's um, you know we all we all know hopefully uh, who our our market is. And if not, that's probably another class this week that uh, Do It in Durham is putting on because they've covered every single topic, I think. Um, so know who your market is. Maybe it's women in business between 35 and 55, um, where image is important to them, style is important. That could be my other business. Um, but that could be fashion. It could be um, a collaboration with someone who um, it, it does jewelry or um, skincare and makeup or um, shoes. They, they could be providers who either collaborate or cross could, cross could cross promote with you. So that it is the same market. It's the, it's the women who care about their appearance, care about their image, and, and um, you know, probably they're in business or entrepreneurs. So look for those people. The other segment is who, who serves your market either before you do or after you do. So again, it would be a similar market, um, but let's, let's use uh, real estate as an example. So when you are looking at, um, at your market, your market is when it comes time for the listing. Uh, hopefully you've already built the relationship or, or the, the listing is going to be very elusive. However, um, so who comes before that listing? It could be a cleaning service. Um, it could be mortgage approval. And then who serves after? It could be a renovator, a painter, landscape, pool installation, all kinds of things that people do to their house, maybe even just before they move in. So that would be um, another example of, of cross promotion or collaboration. So really look at who else is serving that market, but would see them before or after. Um, a, an event planner, of course, uh, another, especially if it's a wedding event planner, um, um, someone who does uh, engagement photography, for example, would come before the wedding planner. So think about, uh, about that. And one of the best examples I've seen develop within Heart of Networking is um, a realtor, a mortgage agent, and an insurance provider. And they've collaborated on workshops and seminars. Of course, they um, refer uh, clients back and forth. They've done seminars on as um, for the first time home buyer, or maybe for someone who's downsizing. So that's just an example of how you could fit um, create that strength and it does create strength in your business it creates depth it it gives you um uh contacts and that uh you would never have reached before and there's power in numbers no person needs to be an island so that's now to make it all work we'd like to just tie it all up in a package and put a nice little bow on it and say that's how you do it right well that would be nice but human beings being what they are, every, um, every uh, setting is different. There are a gazillion different variables and um, that's what keeps it all interesting. Some of the, the cons constant ones are the need for patience, creativity, and curiosity. I think those three are really important. And patience, I will say, doesn't necessarily come easily to many entrepreneurs. We want to jump in and get it done, right? Um, that's generalizing. Not everybody is that way, but we tend to be risk takers and, and uh, get it done kind of people. And so patience might not uh, come easily, but building relationships does take patience. Creativity, we talked about curiosity, um, asking questions that really genuine questions so that you really truly understand what what that person is all about why do they do what they do how do they do it that's different than other people in the same field what's uh, what sets them apart how do they stand out from the the noise and once you know that then you know exactly who to refer them to right um you know somebody who is um let's say an organizer 
uh, a professional organizer and if they are um, specializing in downsizing seniors that's a whole different uh, set of, of referrals than someone who is uh, you know an office organizer just really understand what it is that they do Networking events are plentiful. I think since we've all gone virtual, they're even more plentiful than ever. Um, so how do you decide which ones you want to attend? Which ones are going to work for you? First of all, one of the questions I would ask is, um, is it focused on a local market or is it more on a global scale? And that is a, a big one. I mean, if it's a global scale group and you are local, you have to be, you know, you're, you're a photographer. Um, we have Rose Sood on here today and, and Rose works fairly local because she has to be on site or they have to come to her, one of the two. So a, a global market isn't probably in her realm of interest. So think about that. Are you B2B or B2C or both? Some groups tend to be more focused on one or the other. Where would your market or your market partners be found? Again, are they in those more local groups? Or are they in global groups? Are they in national groups? Of course, you need to look at what time of day and how often the organization meets. If your schedule only allows for evening meetings, then that rules out the daytime. If you prefer daytime um, and evening is family time, then you work with that. If you can only um, commit you know, once a month, then you wouldn't look at the weekly meetings. If, if weekly fits in your, your schedule, then that's great too. And then lo also look at what platform they use. Um, I don't know how many of you have been on um, on Heart of Networking or other uh, events on the World Event Center, but it's absolutely amazing. I love it because it's it's designed for networking. So there's more, um, more choice of how you can move around and talk individually with people. So that's something that I look for. And there are other platforms that are similar, uh, have that, that advantage. So you start narrowing the field a little bit that way, and then you start visiting them. And most groups, not all, but most groups um, do allow you to come the first time um, on a complimentary basis so you can get an idea how that feels. Do you feel at home there? Do you feel welcome? Do you feel like people want to, want to listen to you? Do you feel like you want to listen to them? Because that's just as important. And we know that since we've been virtual follow-up, the follow-up, has changed. The follow-up, the need for follow-up is even greater. We've always known that follow-up from any business interaction is important. I think it's probably the biggest thing that slips through the cracks as well, even though it is one of the most important segments. But I do believe that what happens between the, the events or the meetings is every bit as important as what happens at those events. So you want to look at, after you've been to a, a, an organization a couple of times, um, think about how receptive people are to follow up. Now, the onus is on you to do follow up in a, uh, an ethical manner and you can't bombard people and you don't want to bombard people. Again, think of how they're seeing you through their eyes. If you, are, if you get backed into a corner by follow-up, you're not going to be receptive. It's not going to help anyone. So ask if it's okay to follow up. Again, asking permission opens the door. So if you do have, when you have a conversation with someone, Simple question, would it be okay with if I followed up with you in the next couple of days, I'd like to chat more about and let them know what you want to chat about. Don't leave it a mystery. Don't leave it hanging because that's not a good approach for most people. And then listen to what their answer is. 
of course, you also also want to connect with them on social media, wherever that is that you are and they are. That's one of the things that I love about the World Event Center platform is that you can connect directly from there to LinkedIn. They have the, the link in their, in their avatar. So um, it's really easy to connect with people, but that's a great way to learn more about them and understand what it is that they are doing. And whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, wherever they are, whichever platforms you use, um, make sure that you do connect. And then the follow-up, of course, could be a, a phone chat. It could be a Zoom chat. My personal preference is a Zoom chat. I, I just feel like it's more personal. Um, I know some people have kind of fallen off networking since, uh, since we've gone virtual. And uh, quite frankly, I think that's a mistake. Um, it, it's all we've had, right? <laughs> so it was it was keeping those relationships alive. And I think the more that you're on virtual meetings and, and um, virtual connections, the more comfortable you get with it and you feel like you're sitting in the same room and having that coffee. I mean, if, if you're able to do that and have a, a, uh, an in-person coffee, then that's, uh, that's fine too. But I've got to tell you, the Zoom, coffee dates are real time savers, real time savers. Anybody else agree with that? Um, because it's been, yeah, because it's, uh, you know, you can, time can get away on you when you're in a coffee shop. Um, and it's great that you're making friends and, and, uh, and, and learning about them, but man, oh man, time can go by. So, um, think of it that way and and use your time wisely if you're finding that you're not getting results through networking um, you may find that you need to fine tune your your message and you may have found over the last few months that your message needed to be changed a little um, by go when we're when we're on virtual as opposed to in person if you're used to doing, um, you know, a showcase ex, uh, table at, at meetings and you've got product there to sell, that's a different conversation than when you're in a, a Zoom box, right? Um, so because you don't have the the product there to to test and try and so on. So you may need to uh, to fine tune your message for that reason, and and make sure that your message shares what the gap is that you fill. So you, you, you need to be, you're filling a need, right? And so what is that gap? And are you pointing that out to them? I, I do think that we need to work smarter to get the same kind of traction in virtual events and in virtual connections. I think we need to stay focused. Um, I think we need to um, just always be thinking of that other person. That, I mean, that hasn't changed. Um, but, but you really need to give them information that applies to them. You have to be concise and, and focused. Um, and before we go any further, I think we should, what time is our time here? I think we should open it up to any questions that you have. I don't know if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, nope. Um, does anybody have any questions? You can unmute and and ask if you're anything that I touched on that you want more on our virtual trade shows worthwhile okay so that's a different um that's a good question Kathy um virtual trade shows are are diff are different um than a, a virtual networking meeting right uh, just as real life trade shows are different than uh, a real life networking show so they have different a different purpose a trade show is uh, you know the uh, the exhibitors each have their booth and people would come and visit that booth and ask their questions and get to know what's what's going on just like we did when we went to home shows and has anybody been to real life shows yet are they are they back <laughs> not yet I guess a little bit um but it, it's it it is a different so it's, it's not um, it's more focus on focused on the um, on the vendors that are there, although there's certainly chit chat between the attendees as well. So it's just a little different focus. 
Um, and again, I think the best thing to do because every business is different, every business is handled differently. I think the best thing to do is attend a time or two and just see if it's right for your business. I, I think it can work extremely well, um, but depends on your, your type of business, what category you're in and, and whether that's a, a format that, that you feel comfortable with. Uh, business cards. What happened there with business cards? There was a, do we still need business cards? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you know, part of me wants to say, really, for what? And then part of me wants that little piece of something in my hand. Um, so I think, I think there is, as, as long as we're virtual, no, but as we're starting to head back out into pers in person, and the other thing with networking is, of course, you can network in places that are not formal networking spaces. Grocery store lineup. Goodness knows we've had enough of those. And even though you're six feet apart, you can still hand a, a business card, right? If, if that comes up in conversation. So it, it's not a bad idea to be prepared for follow-up. Um, certainly there are, you know, the, the digital ways of doing that and, you know, connecting on LinkedIn and so on. Um, yes, LinkedIn page for, for uh, connecting um, uh, contacts. Um, I think there's, until we are back, really in person there's there's not a lot of uh a lot of use for printed business cards sad to say for anyone who's in the printing business um but i think i think that will uh, will probably come back but i have to say i i started my cabbie fashion business in may of 2020 so i have not been out in person with that business. And I, I have yet to get business cards for that one. I certainly make lots of connections and follow up on those connections. Oh, the schoolyard for parents. Absolutely, good idea, Ashley. So there, there are, there are um, ways that you can use them. And, and of course, as we head in the right direction and, and get back out there, we, we'll have more and more use for them. Okay, what else have we got here? Did I miss any questions? Uh, schoolyard, yeah, got that. Networking in general, but what specifically needs to be done when networking virtually? Can't imagine how it's done in a group setting. How do you meet one person? Okay, so thank you, Liz Blight, for that question. Um, that's why I say it's really the follow up is even more important. If you're on a platform where you can meet one on one and 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 you can do that, I won't go into the mechanics of it now. But in, with Heart of Networking, you can do that. You can move off to a table on the side and call someone over, and you have a private conversation there. That you can't do that in Zoom, of course, because when you're divided into Zoom rooms, you're you're put in with people that you don't know. The advantage to that is that you talk to people that you don't know, <laughs> and and that's always good. Um, but it's really in the follow-up. So you 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 hear them say something if they're doing their one minute introduction or 30 second, whatever that group um, organizes, then you, you hear something in there that twigs something in you that you want to know more about. And you make notes, notes, however you make notes, whether they're electronic or whether it's pen and paper, make notes while you're on any kind of networking virtually because you, that's how you will follow up. That's how you will connect. You'll do a little bit of creeping um, on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or wherever, you learn more about them and you think, hmm, you know, she and I, we kind of serve the same people. Maybe it's worth a conversation. Maybe there's something we can do together. Will we have an opportunity to virtually network today? We could do that for sure. Um, so Liz, I, I, I don't know if that really answers your question or not. Feel free to unmute and, and let me know if that's not the case. It, it's, I, I, I think, like I say, I think we do have to work harder to get the same, or smarter, to get the same traction with virtual. 
um, but it certainly can be done. I, I have to say, I've made some great connections over the last year and a half that I probably would not have made otherwise. Farther and wider, I have people that I've connected with in Manitoba, in Alberta, uh, in BC. I have to go, I, have, I wanna go east too. <laughs> um, but it was speaking of Alberta, one of my friends who, who runs a, a business networking group there, her name is Sandra Bell, um, who I did not know pre-pandemic. Um, she uses the term, she says that the, the goal of a networking event is to get a second date. And isn't that the truth? You know, it, it's, it's just, it's a meeting now. We, we meet each other now. However, we do want to follow up. We do want to learn more about that person. We do want that second date. We don't want somebody who thinks that we should, you know, uh, get married, buy a house and start a family this week. So that's not the kind of networking you want to do. You don't want to be a steamroller, but you want to know, hmm, there's something interesting about either A, the person, or B, what that person does. And I saw something, I have to read you this. I saw this on, um, and maybe it's been around Facebook before, but I, it really hit me when I saw it today. It's a quote by Jay Danzi, and it's, your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card. How you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. We know that small business owners are the face of the business. You represent your brand. And again, we're not going into branding and marketing because that's a whole other, uh, a whole other class, but you, you are the face of your business. And so somebody, if somebody clicks with you, you've probably got a, a referral or a new client or maybe a collaboration. They don't click with you. That second date might be a little elusive. Oh, Ashley, launched my biz during the pandemic. I've connected with mortgage agents all over the province. In fact, I would consider an, in oh, one I would consider an industry specific mentor lives in Timmins. Another one that we brainstormed together lives in Sudbury. Absolutely. So that is, that's, you know, the, the, um, the lack of distance and so on, it's, uh, are, you know, we don't have to be concerned about distance and, and boundaries and so on. I think that's been the real advantage with, uh, with going virtual. And I, I've got to tell you, 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 we all need to be busy with, get, I, I, I don't like to use the word comfortable because you know, we're not all comfortable with networking of any sort, and we certainly need to uh, uh, get past that, that um, outside of our comfort zone. Um, but we, we can really embrace virtual networking because I believe personally that it's here to stay. I think we will have in-person meetings, but there have been so many connections made that are outside of driving distance that I think virtual is here to stay. So you might as well get used to it and, and that it's the follow-up. It's, it's always been the follow-up, but now it's even more important because you just get a glimpse of people, a glimpse into their business when you meet them the first time. Uh, what do I think of Chamber of Commerce or Toastmaster Speakers Group for Networking? I think that every Every idea that anybody could come up with for networking is a good idea if it makes sense for you. I'm very involved with the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade. Um, I know that people, um, Patrice, for example, has met loads of people through Toastmasters. Um, anywhere that you can meet new people and expand your circle is, is a, a, a bonus. And it does, that's what I say, it doesn't have to be, it could be volunteering. You could be volunteering. I know that's a little tricky these days, but you, you could be volunteering for a, a charitable organization, for example. Um, I work with 100 Women Who Care uh, in Ajax Pickering Whitby, and I've met lots of women through that organization that I would not have met before otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think that, again, visit a time or two and see if it's a, a fit for you. You do have to feel 
comfortable there. Um, I know that's that's always been one of the things that I've found uh, that I'm most proud of is when people come out, and now I'm talking um, in person, but I guess it's the same with virtual, uh, when people come to Heart of Networking the first time and they say they felt so welcomed. That to me is so important. Um, they they have to you have to feel welcomed where you are you may not feel like you're sitting at a table with your best buddies you just met them um, but it is it is important that you um, thanks Patrice for putting that in um, it, it is important that you that you don't feel on edge or you know and anything that that doesn't sort of sit with your philosophies there are there are some groups that have different philosophies than I have that doesn't mean that I'm right and they're wrong. It's just not right for me. So I don't necessarily belong to that group or, or attend that group. Um, we all have our own uh, thoughts on, on some things. So Patrice, do you want to, thank you Patrice for putting that quote in. Doesn't that just say it all really? I just love that. Uh, did I miss any questions? Uh, oh, Cindy, uh, Cindy Mount. Within Zoom, you can set it so people select their own. Uh, right, yes, yeah, you can do that. Most most uh, people don't, but. Uh, well, we have the opportunity to network today. We can do that. Okay, I think I think we got all the questions. Is there any, before we go to network, are there any other questions that you have. So when we go into the room, I'm going to suggest that um, everybody, uh, oh, we're, we're good for time. So everybody um, have one minute. How many, uh, how many will we put in a room, Patrice? Can you sort that one out? There are 21 altogether. So I can put, how many rooms would you like? Because if we do Four, five rooms, four people in each room, a minute each is about, we'll give like five minutes for each. So it's one minute at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. And we can run two or three of those. And, uh, and so you have one minute to share whatever it is that you think is important to, to share about your business. And I would caution you not to give a laundry list of, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this. Because by the time you get to the fifth thing that you do, I forgot what the first one was. So share something interesting about your business. Maybe it's something that that happened today. Maybe you learned something in one of the um, in one of the trainings today that uh, really will help you in your business. And you can, you know, use that to to you know, I learned X so that I can put that into my business, and that will help me with Y. Um, bye, Judy. Uh, and so you could use something that you learned today in a training, or you can just share something that you feel like we need to know about your business. Maybe you've got something, an event coming up or um, a new launch or whatever that is. I leave that up to you. Okay, okay so we're going to get started and I will do the creation. Anybody in the room that's never done a breakout room before? Just a quick question about that. Nope, okay, super. So we're going to get started. One minute each, here we go. Open all rooms. So when you have the, when you see the message come up, just click click join and it will automatically put you into a room. I don't know if uh, Bridget and Narinja, are you all still with us? All right, how was that for everyone? Very good. Did everybody meet somebody that they did not know before tonight? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. that yes. was great. Yes. All three. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So that's a little uh, a little taste of what is uh, what what networking is all about, and to be able to then follow up with those people as well. Do we have time? For, we have time for to do another one, right, Patrice? Everybody up for one more? Sure. All righty, let's go. So we want to not create the same room. So I will try and shuffle it so yes. we can mix it up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. There we go. There we go. Have fun, guys. Happy connecting. Yay. No casualties. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I hope everybody had some 
good conversations there. That was that was an interesting one for me. It was one one brand new person that I hadn't met before, and one that I've known for ages and ages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I what I would like to do we can we can do certainly do another one of those um, but I would like to do my I'll do my closing piece just in case anybody has to go and then um, I don't know if Patrice has more to add um, and then we'll um, we'll we'll do another um, uh, breakout Zoom. room breakout room that's what I was trying to think. <laughs> All I got to think of was Zoom room, but I knew that was right. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, so I'll just um, just summarize what we've been talking about and uh, give you an offer. Um, so we we talked a, a little bit about what networking really is and and what the purpose of it is and and what what really makes it work. What makes it so effective? We all know people that have built almost their entire business through networking myself included. Um, and, and I know that Patrice has had huge success through networking um, in, in um, entrepreneurial efforts, as well as, uh, as finding uh, corporate jobs. So getting things done is really what, it, what it's all about, the power of asking, creating collaborations, uh, who or what organization or business do you know that serves the same target market as you, but does something different? Follow up. You know that we've all got the attention span of a gnat and it's gotten worse over the last year and a half. <laughs> so really, truly follow up and follow up quickly, follow up ethically and um, build that no like trust and remember and you want to be remembered in a good way, you want to be remembered for positive things, expand your network, reaching out into the next ripple, building advocates, and of course this works both ways. Who else can you help to achieve their goals? And who else can help you achieve yours? Think of those two questions. Who else can you help to achieve their goals? And who else can help you achieve yours? Your network can be very powerful and it will be the future of your business or your organization. You can build it completely through networking. And I'm very happy to anybody that wants to have an individual conversation with me um, for anything specific that you didn't want to necessarily talk about in the group. Uh, I'm going to put all of my um, contact information in the chat. And there is also in there an offer. Uh, the first visit for Heart of Networking is always complimentary. So if you have not been to any of our Heart of Networking events before, or you haven't been since we've gone virtual, let's say, um, then you can register for any one of the three upcoming meetings. Um, so for the fellows, I think we just have, Miran is the only fellow left on here, I think. Um, and uh, so the December workshop and the December event are both men included. Heart of Networking is primarily a business women's networking group, um, but we do uh, have the men included for um, special events. So if you Pero use that code. Una, 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 una vela de esta caraja. Okay. Okay, um, so use that code. The link to register is in the chat there. Um, it's on heartofnetworkingevents.com in the, the uh, calendar. So just choose the event that you um, want to join us for as your complimentary. Register with the code DIID BACD, that's do it in Durham BACD, and you'll have a zero balance ticket. And we'd be happy to have you come out and see what Heart of Networking is all about. And uh, then we'll follow up afterwards. Of course, we'll follow up afterwards and uh, see if there's some, some ways that we can help you to build your business. 
So before we go back into a breakout room, is there any questions on anything that, oh, thank you, Susan. Yes, we have some, uh, we have some, uh, some gr a great following. As I say, Heart of Networking will be 10 years old. Uh, same, same age as do it in Durham. We'll, yes. uh, we're all celebrating our 10 years in 2022. So um, the, when will the meetings be live? I, 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 I can't answer that. Um, I, there are still too many variables. I'm not ready to flip the switch yet, but I have my eye on the switch. So just so you know. <laughs> Any other any other questions? Feel free to unmute and or comments. Doesn't have to be a question. Maybe there's something that you want to share. Maybe something that's worked well for you or something that you've had difficulty with. You guys are very quiet today. Yes, I got one one thing. Okay. Um, one of the great things that I learned with you, Marlene, is um, how to sort of pracy down what I wanted and what I wanted to show to people within one minute. So with real estate being such a wide field, it's like, how the heck can I manage to think of every single thing that I believe in, that I want to pop, share with people that will understand how I am. And that exercise was really great to, to try and think of your business, how you want to perceive people to perceive you and how you want to get it across. And what I did was I would write out everything and then delete and delete and delete. And then I would go on to a little Zoom meeting myself and record it and see how it sounded. And, you know, it became sort of six minutes, five minutes, four and a half minutes, way too long. Jesus, I'm not smiling enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So that's how I managed to get what I have to say down to sort of one minute. And it was a great exercise. And one of the best things that um, that I had to do with your meeting, it was an awesome, awesome um, thing that to do. Well, thank you for saying that. And, it, and it's true, your message has to be compelling. Yes. And that's why, why I, I mentioned the, you know, the laundry list. I see that far too often. Uh, where people are listing off all of the different services that they provide, for example, or, or a, you know, a product line and they list all the products. Um, yes. it, it's, it's not about every single detail that you do as much as it is why you do it and who you help, who you serve, right? And who you are. Thank you. Yeah, and who yeah. you are. Who yeah. you are. Yep. Yeah. Where can we find... Business card. Sorry, where can we find a list of all the networking um, groups in Durham to find the one that uh, that works for us. Google. Well, I tried that and not, <laughs> not a lot came up. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Um, we can talk about that, Nicole. I can make some suggestions um, okay. to you. Just reach out to me, and okay. we can uh, we can connect on that. Um, it, you know, it depends on whether you want women's networking, whether you want you know men and women, whatever, whoever your, your market is and so on. Oh, Patrice says there's a list on the BACD website. Oh, awesome. there you go. Yeah, I of haven't, I BACD haven't checked there, but taken that, care of that. that was going to be my next step is to look at the BACD site. Thank you. We should have known, Nicole. <laughs> hey, Marlene. Yes. I was on the BACD site uh, today and I noticed on their event page, there's a, uh, Ajax Pickering Board of Trade networking mornings um, this month. Uh, are they worthwhile attending? There's a uh, breakfast tomorrow morning, yes. Um, I, I haven't been to an in-person one for a long time. I, I do attend whatever I can get to with the Board of Trade. Um, I, I, I enjoy that organization. I've, I've made some great connections in there. Um, or, you know, if you're in Whitby, Whitby Chamber, Oshawa Chamber, I, I don't, I, I've been to some Whitby Chamber events, but because I live in Pickering, I tend to do more the, the Ajax Pickering. So um, again, yes, I think that a visit or two, you can check the calendar and, and book ahead. I don't know if you can still get in for tomorrow morning or not. Well, um, it's Thursday. I have it on my calendar for Thursday the breakfast. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. I did see something for them for tomorrow. I was looking into that myself. Really? Okay. I'll have to double check to see when it is. 
and and good point patrice has just said many events are open to members and non-members so yeah, oh, if yeah. they're uh so an organization that has a membership like the ajax pickering board of trade for example um non-members can attend most events sometimes it'll say members only but not not usually and the, the non-member fee may be a little higher than a, a membership fee um meeting fee but um you know it's it's worth it to go and uh, check it out and and just you know kind of feel it out it's 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 not for me to say what's right and wrong for you because i could be leading you completely the wrong way what's right or wrong for me and my business and what's right or wrong for you in in your business and with you building your your um your travel business and and all i you know i i i think i think it would be worth it kathy to um to to visit with uh, the board of trade <laughs> And also the Thank you, different Marie. times of day because you will get different people attending a morning meeting than you would uh, say an afternoon or an evening meeting. You're going to get a completely different group of people getting together. So you've got to find out your target market, which meetings are they attending. Yeah, it, it, if people are working during the day, of course, they're going to, they may go to the breakfast and then head to work from there where they might, or they might go to an after five, um, networking after five, you know, it, it, it is a different, you're right, Rose, it is a different crowd at each one, but I, I would not, I mean, I would, I would recommend that you try them out. I would not tell you which ones are the best for you because that's just not, not what I feel comfortable doing. Thanks Marlene. You're welcome. Okay. So I hope that some of you will Take us up on our complimentary ticket and uh, register November 16th is the next one coming up. Uh, the next one coming to with the for the guys is um, we do we do a workshop. So we have monthly meetings. That's always on the third Tuesday morning. They run from um, 9.30 to noon. And then on uh, we do bi-monthly workshops. And that is uh, coming up in December, December the 8th. And we're actually doing the December networking event a, a week early just because of the holidays. That will be December 14th. And likewise for, for Heart of Networking, there are memberships um, that you can participate in uh, and that includes the meetings and everything. Um, we can talk about that, but you can also just pay as you go and, and you know, it's $22 to attend the meetings after your complimentary one. So you never have to join the membership if you choose not to. There are advantages if you do, um, but it's not essential. Okay, so that's 618. So I think if we do one more breakout room, everybody's up for that. Awesome. And I just want to take this opportunity because if we close this up and then we'll do the breakout room. But I wanted to, to, again, say thank you to all the attendees. It's because of you, we've got Global Entrepreneurship, which is the week that we're celebrating. And we're doing it, our way of doing it is through collaborative efforts. We've got community partners, such as the Heart of Networking. Marlene, that was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing all your little, the, the tips and tricks that you've been using for all those years, which is incredible. I was there on that first day. <laughs> Can't believe it's been 10 years. It's actually- I know. I don't want to look back that far. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years, but I am so happy because there's the longevity of it, right? If it wasn't working, it wouldn't be so long. So there you go. There's the need still exists. And to your point, word of mouth is, is still one of the best, most effective ways of growing a business. As the saying goes, it takes a community and in Do It in Durham, we certainly celebrate each of you individuals who are doing this, starting a business or growing a business in the Durham region. So we appreciate you and we appreciate all the sponsors who helped us make this happen because it is something that we're doing together and growing together because of it. So with that, thank you again for showing up. I will now stop recording and then we'll do our final breakout room. Thank you for being a guest in this presentation. If you would like to book an appointment with us here at the Business Advisory Centre Durham, just follow the information right on the closing slide and we look forward to seeing you.